I got the telephone test. I got the cooperation test. Check, check, check. Computer's ready to go. Check. Okay, the candies for the review. Where did the candies go? Who can we trust? Can we trust anything? This might be a job for Pastor Joffrey. P.I. Can the Bible be trusted? The Bible points us to the truth that God loves us. But can it be trusted? We're going to put the Bible to three tests today. Did you know that the Bible is the best-selling book every year? What? The Bible has sold over 5 billion copies. The next closest-selling book has only sold 5 hundred million copies. There are three tests that we are going to do today to see if we can trust the Bible. The first one being the honesty test, the second one being the telephone test, and the third one being the cooperation test. Let's get started. Let's get started with the honesty test. The first thing in any case is you have to get to the eyewitnesses, those who saw what actually happened. The cool thing about the Bible in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels, is that Matthew and John were both disciples. John Mark, who wrote the Gospel of Mark, um, was Peter's secretary. So he wrote down Peter's eyewitnesses. And Luke was a physician, and he wrote his book after interviewing and hearing people's eyewitness accounts or their stories about Jesus. Did the writers of the Gospels tell the truth and be honest, or did they make themselves look like superheroes? Did they tell the truth, even though it made them look bad? What were some of the embarrassing stories that they included? Did you know that Peter was called Satan by Jesus? Ouch! In the Garden of Gethsemane, the disciples ran away. Did you know that Peter denied Jesus not once, twice, but three times, once to even a little girl? Did you know that after Jesus' death, the disciples hit? The disciples argued in front of Jesus, who was the best? And the disciples, some of the disciples died horrible deaths. Would you die for a lie? I know I wouldn't. Number two, the telephone test. You guys have probably played that game where you line up in a row and you give a real simple message at one end and then each person tells the next person the message. And usually by the time you get to the end of the line, the message is totally crazy. Well, that's a lot like the telephone test. From the time that Jesus died to the earliest manuscript that we have today, did the message change? Have you ever heard of the ancient philosopher Plato? 
The earliest manuscripts we have from his writing are 1,200 years after his death. Have you heard of Julius Caesar, a Roman dictator? The earliest writings we have about him are 1,000 years after his death. What about Alexander the Great? He conquered the ancient world as he knew it. And the earliest writings we have about him are 400 years after his death. That's the amazing part about the Gospels. The Gospel is only 50 years from Jesus' death until those stories were written down. How well do you know your great, great, great grandparents? Probably not very well. That's the amazing thing about the time gap of the Bible only being 50 years from Jesus' death to the earliest manuscripts we have written down. The amazing thing about that is that that is well within one person's lifespan. So if something was wrong, they could tell them and correct it because they were there. Remember those ancient figures I was talking about? Julius Caesar, there are 10 copies of his ancient writings. Plato only has seven copies of his ancient writings left. The amazing thing about the New Testament is that there's 24,633 copies of early manuscripts that they can check to see if there is any differences. If you say that the Bible isn't reliable, you have to throw out everything else that we know about ancient history. Number three, the cooperation test. Is there support outside of the Bible that Jesus lived and breathed and talked on this earth? The amazing thing is, there is. There are nine non-Christian sources that are outside the Bible that say that Jesus actually walked on this earth, along with 33 Christian sources outside of the Bible that say that Jesus walked on this earth, for a total of 42 ancient sources that say that Jesus walked on this earth. It's amazing to me that this guy named Tiberius Caesar who was the Roman emperor at the time of Jesus, Jesus' time when he walked on this earth, only has 10 sources saying that he was alive and lived and breathed on this earth. So when you compare the two, Jesus had 42 sources outside of the Bible saying that he lived and breathed on this earth, yet Tiberius Caesar only had 10 sources. So the amazing thing to me is that even if you take the Bible away, there are still ancient sources that say that Jesus Christ walked on this earth. Can the Bible be trusted? It withstood the tests. The honesty test showed that it was reliable. The authors told the truth, even when it made them look bad. The telephone test was proof that the message didn't change. The cooperation test gave evidence, even if you take the Bible away, there is ancient texts and sources that say that Jesus Christ walked on this earth. Can you trust the Bible? Yes, you can!